Hello there, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy days to join us. Um, so my name's Jenna and I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies in cool places. Today, I'm being joined by Nicola, Nicola from the GTA. So she's going to be giving us our presentation. Uh, before I introduce her and our topic, though, I am going to take a quick moment to introduce our portfolio to you. So there you have my email address on the screen, as well as all of the different clients that uh, we represent around the world. Uh, since we're talking about Guyana today, I will introduce our South American portfolio to you. So of course we have Guyana. Uh, we also have Cruz Andino in Patagonia and Argentina. We also have Las Torres Patagonia um, who are in Patagonia as well, but on the Chilean side. Um, then we also represent Grand Hotels Lux, who have properties in both Uruguay and Argentina. We have Jungle Experiences, who do the Amazon River cruising in Peru. And lastly, we have Terra Nova, a little bit further up in Central America, um, doing Costa Rica travel design. So if you do have any questions on those that I just mentioned or any of the ones that you see up there on your screen, I'm available at that email address there. So if you do have any questions, as I mentioned, if you wanna receive any digital information, maybe set up a private uh, training for you and your team, you are more than welcome to reach out to me for any of those things. Um, a couple quick housekeeping items to go over for today. This webinar will be recorded, so if you do have to answer a call or step away, if you miss something, um, please uh, do not worry. I will be sending out the recording to everyone later this week. You can also find any previous Guyana webinars. Are, they are always posted on our Emerging Destinations website and on our Emerging Destinations YouTube channel. So if there is a topic that you missed or um, wanna go back and review, you can find them all on there, or if not, uh, I can, send them to you as well. So don't worry, um, we will definitely get you the recording. And also there will be a Q&A at the end of the session. So if you do have any questions throughout Nicola's presentation, please feel free to type them through to us using the GoToWebinar control panel located on your right hand side there. Um, any comments, welcome as, as well. So if you do have anything, type through there and we'll get Nicola to answer as many of those at the end of the webinar as possible. Again, if there's any questions that we don't get to in this time frame, we will make sure to send them out to you in our webinar follow up as well. So I will um, pass things over to Nicola on that note. I, I, I know I didn't explain too much about what we're talking about today, so I'll let her take that over. Uh, the theme is water. Um, uh, water, rivers, et cetera, in Guyana are an integral part to uh, their livelihood. So I will let her talk a bit more about that topic and uh, send her over to you, Nicola. Thanks, Jenna. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nicola, and I work here in Georgetown, Guyana, for the Guyana Tourism Authority. Today, we will be exploring some of the rivers of Guyana. We've done so many webinars and done so many work in the past that talks about our tourism circuits and some of our products, um, but a lot of that is connected to a lot of our waterway system, and many persons do know about our three main rivers. So today, I'm going to carry you through those three main rivers and connect our tourism products to them. Um, my name is Nicola Bauram and I am the Senior Officer of Marketing here at the Ghana Tourism Authority. And a part of my team is also Anne-Marie Citran, who is the Senior Manager of Destination Marketing. Both of our emails are below. Um, Jenna is also a great help, but in the event that you need to reach us directly, please see our contact information there. Um, Guyana is a rare kind of place. Uh, we call it nature's beating heart. But the best way to explain this and to give a little insight into the presentation is through a video. So I'm going to share one of our destination videos with you right now. I hope you all enjoy. Guyana's heart lies with its beautifully exotic inland regions, which are in stark contrast to the hustle and bustle of Georgetown and the coast. Guyana's capital owes much of its distinctive architecture to the colonization of the French, Dutch and then the British. From the impressive town museums to the Grand Cathedral, reputedly the tallest freestanding wooden building in the world, 
the city's markets are vibrant with the flurry of everyday life and the beautiful botanical gardens offer a tranquil retreat. Guyana is the only country in South America where English is the official language. With a rich diversity of people. And on the coast there's a distinctive Caribbean culture. The country's strong indigenous culture is evident as soon as you travel inland from Georgetown or along the lower Essequibo. Here, Fort Island, home to the Dutch government in the 18th century, is built on one of 365 islands on this vast waterway, the third largest river in South America. The river's remote feel is punctuated by various island resorts with inviting beaches. Deeper into the interior, there are welcoming community lodges where you can explore the rainforest or move south towards the rolling savanna. Here you really get a feel for the wonderful eco-projects that are happening in the country. It also gives you a chance to meet people from the nine indigenous groups who will welcome you to this unique and fascinating culture. Um. So like I was saying, Guyana is located just below the Caribbean Sea and sandwiched between Brazil, Venezuela, and Suriname. We do have a couple of airlines that serve from the North American markets with direct flights as well. This includes American Airlines, JetBlue, Copa Airlines can connect you through Panama, uh, Caribbean Airlines and Transgan Airways does serve Barbados as well as some areas of Trinidad. And you can also get connections to our UK market with Virgin Atlantic and British Airways. JetBlue flies directly from JFK in New York. American Airlines flies from Miami. Caribbean Airlines offers flights from Miami, Toronto, Trinidad and Barbados. And Kobe Airlines connects through Panama. It's about 14 destinations in North America. So if you are coming from the West Coast, it is one of the best connections to Guyana. What is the Guyana tourism product? Our tourism products is very vast and diverse and it connects to a lot of things that the traveler is looking for today. But uh, the best way we can describe this is five main aspects. Nature and wildlife, which touches on the pristine nature, rainforest, vast savannas and wildlife experiences here in country. Active exploration, which is tied to all of our adventurous experiences conservation and safe travel, scientific, academic, volunteer, and educational travel. That happens through researchers, universities, and tied to some of our eco lodges. Birding, Guyana has over 820 species of birds that's endemic to the Guyana Shield and to our country. And also culture and heritage that touches on the six ethnic groups that makes Guyana the beautiful cultural melting pot it is today and also our indigenous community-led and owned tourism experiences. I know COVID is still among us, so we thought to give you a quick COVID-19 update for the country. As of February 17th, we have 8,313 confirmed cases. Locally, there is a curfew that is in effect from 10.30 p.m. to 4 a.m. Essential businesses are allowed to be open. You are required to physical distance and wear masks in public and tour operators, hotels and travel experiences have to be given a safer travel approval by the Guyana Tourism Authority before they are allowed to welcome travelers. And a lot of this process that we go through the Guyana Tourism Authority with our tourism businesses help to ensure that they do have their hygiene and sanitation protocols in place and all of their experiences are safe for travelers coming in to enjoy the country. When you are traveling to Guyana, you are required to take a PCR test within seven days of travel. If you do take this test three days, which is 72 hours before you travel, you will not be required to take a second test upon arrival. However, if your test is done within four to seven days of travel, passengers are asked to be retested upon arrival in Guyana. You're also asked to complete a passenger locator form, and all this information can also be found on guyanatravel.gy. 
businesses that have been inspected by the Ghana Tourism Authority and listed as safe for travel will also be listed on our Guyana Tourism Authority's Facebook page and our Discover Guyana's web Facebook page. You will see we do have a uh, an album that has this information inside, but businesses, interior lodges and resorts, uh, hotels, tour operators, and destination management companies that have been inspected and listed as safe for you all to visit are listed there. This is just some examples of what the marketing and the graphic looks like to let travelers know where it's safe to visit. So now it's the fun part. It's time to get into the main topic of this webinar, which is the rivers of Guyana. We're going to first start off with the Essequibo River. This is the third largest river in South America and the largest river here in Guyana. It measures 1,014 kilometers, which is just about 630 miles. So on the right, there is a map of the country. But can you find the Essequibo River? If you do look in the middle of the country coming down in bold letters, you'll see a very long blue line, and that is the Essequibo River. In the Essequibo River, at the very top, we have what we call the Essequibo Circuit, and this is more coastal to the country. Here you will find a lot of island-style resorts that gives you a, a good taste of what awaits you when you go deeper into the rainforest of the country. Some of these include Baganara Island Resort. Um, this location is also safe for travel and activities here include kayaking, sunbathing. You can also have company retreats here and you can also have larger groups and smaller groups visit the country to enjoy the area. They also do take you on nature walks and some of their own personal tours and water activities. Sloth Island Resort has a bit more of a rusticer feel and it's located maybe about 20 minutes from Baganara Island Resort. This uh, boasts a great rainforest behind it and a small canopy walkway that you can actually walk through the rainforest for birding, photography, and wildlife spotting. And their specialty is sloth. These are what people say the slow, one of the slowest animals in the world, but if you've ever seen them climbing up a tree, you will definitely be surprised. Just opposite Sloth Island, just about 10 to 15 minutes on a boat includes Huracaba River Resort. This is a favorite for a lot of locals and returning Guyanese. They do like to play a lot of sports here and also just enjoy the nature-based activities at the resort. These images were also taken all before COVID. Well, what's special about the Escobar Re River region is that you also do have a lot of our heritage sites that you can visit when you see at any one of these nature resorts. This includes Fort Zelandia, which was built by the Dutch before Guyana became ruled by the British. And on Fort Island, where Fort Zelandia is, you'll also see the Court of Policy, which is the top left-hand corner. Um, you can also visit Fort Kaik overall, which is not far off of it, to see some of the Dutch remains that we still have. There's 365 islands on the Escobo, along the Escobo River, and some of them also have other buildings that were built during that time and still remain intact today, including church at the bottom lower half of the picture. One of the main towns of Nan is also in the Escobo River, closer to that coast circuit, and this is Partica. When you come off the, the boat, when you go to Barska, you can walk along the boardwalk and see some of the local areas and local cuisine that they have to offer there, or go more into the town to learn about their daily lifestyle. Traveling down the Essequibo River from the Essequibo circuit, you're now going to enter into the North Rupununi region of Guyana. This is one of the best and most well-packaged areas of Guyana and what a lot of travelers come to experience. We're not going to touch on all of the lodges that form the circuit, but we're definitely going to highlight the ones along that river path. The first one you will meet is the Iroquama River Lodge, and this is a research center that 
was formed to protect the Arikrama Rainforest Reserve, which is one of the protected areas here in Guyana. Many researchers, university students, and scientists come to spend their time or their vacation here for research purposes, including researching the biodiversity in our flora and fauna. We actually did also release a conservation video which does highlight some of the activities that you can do here along with some other lodges. Traveling down the Etiquabur River region from Arokrama River Lodge, you will see a bit of a disconnect into the water. And this is where the Etiquabur River, its tributary begins, which is the Rupinuni River. And that's the image to the left, where you see that division of the color of the water. As you continue down the Rupinuni River, you will see another tributary, which is the Rewa River. And between the Rewa River and the Rupununi River, you will be welcomed by Rewa Eco Lodge. This is one of the community-led and owned tourism lodges here in Guyana, which is where the village and the community came together and decided that they want to start a tourism project and they want to be a part of the tourism industry. The village came together to build a lodge to welcome travelers, to show them what their daily lives are like what it's like to go fishing, to learn how to weave, and to also go bird watching, wildlife spotting, and live within the rainforest. Rewa Lodge is very well known for its sport fishing and fishing activities, and more specifically, the catch and release fishing of the Arapaima species, which is the largest scaled freshwater fish in the world. That is the image to the top left-hand corner of this slide. But if you're not into Arapaima fishing or want to fish some of the monster species of Guyana, you can definitely go for the smaller ones, such as the piranhas. This was also the site for the Gordon Ramsay film that released last year of Uncharted, where Gordon Ramsay came to Guyana to film, um, to cook with some of the locals here and made one of our traditional dishes, pepper pot. As you go down from Rewa, you are moving more along the Rupununi River and will touch the next one, which we call Karanambu. Karanambu Lodge is not tied to a specific community, but it does employ a lot of persons in surrounding communities. But one of the biggest attractions for this area is its giant river otter conservation project. This was started by someone named Diane McTurk who took in orphaned otters and nursed them back to health until they were ready to be released into the wild. This is a great story and it still continues up to today with her family and the lodge continuing on that legacy. Karanambu is also famous for the water lily pond that's not that far off of the river and the lodge where you can go and have a beautiful sunset ride and go wildlife spotting and even look for some of these river otters on the water. Karanambu is in a unique position where you can also go and see some of the land creatures and some of the land giants of Guyana that, we, that are some of the world's largest species in this part of the planet. They're also very famous for giant and eater spottings as well. Just off of Karanambu and coming down the river, you're going to meet Cayman House. This is a field research station in the village of Yukari. It was started to it was started to promote a black Cayman conservation project, which was tied to the reduction of the species in Guyana due to poaching back in the 1990s. It, the village worked with researchers to help to mark and tag caimans in the area that will let them know how the population is growing and how quickly the population is reproducing and this helped to grow that population here in Guyana and also a great tourism attraction for a lot of travelers that want to be a part of that process. You can see that the lodge of itself is not as typical for most indigenous lodges, but it does have that research library feel as well to it. And this is an image of going through that process, 
travelers will go with some of the locals in some of the local boats in the night. They will find a caiman, a black caiman in the water and bring it up to the sandbanks. It's then that the researchers, uh, the villagers and the travelers that come get to be a part of the process to measure, weigh and record all of the statistics on that caiman. This information is then stored back in the lodge when you return back from your trip and this information does help to preserve the population here in Guyana. Cayman House is also home to the Yellow-Footed Turtle Project. They, they do have a turtle festival every year where back in the day, um, a lot of the locals used to celebrate the new year by eating some of the turtle meat. But just a couple of years ago, the locals saw that the population was not reproducing as quickly for them to eat or embrace this festival every year. So the locals in that village took it upon themselves to stop that aspect of the festival and started the project to preserve this species. So they do take the eggs that are laid and rehome them and hatch them and then rehome these species into the wild. And the Turtle Festival is now celebrated in March or April every year where the new set of turtles that are homed at the lodge is released back into the wild when they are, when they are of age to be able to fend for themselves. Now that we've finished most of the Essequibo River, or at least some of the resorts and community-led and owned lodges that you can find there, we will move to the smallest river in Guyana, which is the Demerara River. And this is the main river that has a lot of our commercial activities, but also is still a great product to experience. This particular picture is taken at the very top of Guyana, which is the mouth of the river, where a lot of persons use water taxis and how we used to call it speedboats to move from one part of the river to another. There's also a bridge that connects a little bit later on, but this particular image does show um, what it looks like at sunset, which is when one of our de destination marketing management companies here also developed a special tour that carries you along the Demerara River during the sunset time. They tell you about the history of the area, about the history of Guyana, and you get to enjoy the sunset, some of our famous Eldorado rum, and one of the best activities you can do here is bird watching. Along this river, you'll see many of this species. This is the Scarlet Ibis, um, which is a fun one to spot in this area of Guyana. When you travel down the Damara River, you will also go into one of the smaller tributary rivers, which can carry you through the only nature resort on this river that is very similar to those in the Esquibo, and this is the Arrow Point Nature Resort. Not too far off from this resort, there is also an indigenous community where you can stop to go through that village and learn about their way of life and also the craft items that they have for sale there. If you're lucky, you might even see some persons doing the weaving there when you're visiting. This is very popular for day trips or even longer weekends or two or three days as well. As we move from west to east of the country, we're moving from at the Escobar River to the Demerara River to the Burbies River. This is what we call the ancient county of Guyana. It is not the biggest uh, river or biggest area of Guyana that, that is home to more visitor ready or market ready products, but it does speak a lot of, about the roots of Guyana and you can see the more country style and country feel of Guyana. One of the newer products that our product development team is working to develop along this way is called a rum root tour, which carries you through the sugar, one of the sugar estates in Burbies that carries you through the process of making the Demerara gold on some of our sugar here. 
and then the byproduct, which is used to make Eldorado rum. Eldorado is one of the world's best rums, and I believe we won five awards just for this particular one. There's also a great place to see a lot of the more local water activities, including local fishermen trying to get a daily catch or try some good uh, local food that you can get not that far off of the area. Not all of our, well again, is a place filled with many waterways. Not all of our highest attractions are tied to water. So before I get into our biggest attraction of the country that is definitely tied to water, I want to have some highlights and mentions. So in the Rupununi region, you can also visit the Irokrama Canopy Walkway found at Atal Rainforest Lodge. This is a bridge that is suspended in among the trees and the pristine rainforest of Guyana. You can come here to bird watch to wildlife spot and you feel really at nature here because it's just you and the trees. You can also take a ride to the South Rupununi of the country and enjoy a more Western lifestyle or a ranching lifestyle where you get to learn about cattle, horseback riding and the Vicero lifestyle here. One of our safer travel locations that is found in the South Rupununi and that is hosting travelers is Waikin Ranch. And one of Guyana's biggest attractions is Kaitor Falls. This fall stands at 741 feet and it's just you and the rails when you visit Kaitor Falls. There are no rails here. Um, it is about five, four to five times higher than Niagara Falls. And the largest group size you will have visiting this is about 12 persons. So it's really just you and nature here at Kaitro Falls. One of the best experiences you can also have here is staying overnight at the lodge and waking up in the morning to watch the sunrise over the water with your cup of coffee. For more information, you can visit GuyanaTourism.com. This is the official destination website of Guyana. It is operated and monitored by the Guyana Tourism Authority. We are the government agency with the responsibility for product development and marketing of the Guyana Tourism products. You can also visit www.tag.co. This is the website link for the Tourism and Hospitality Association of Guyana. It is a private sector membership-based organization for our local tourism industry. You can also visit Rupinuni at www.visitrupinuni.com, a regional destination management organization for the North, Central, and South Rupinuni region of Guyana. You can find more information on uh, traveling to Guyana from www.guyanatravel.gy. You can also learn more about the main airport that serve your market at cgairport-gy.com. And for investment opportunities and information, please visit goinvest.gov.gy. This is our team here at the Ghana Tourism Authority, and we are supported every day by our international team of market representation firms in the North American markets, UK, Germany, and also equally supported by our local tourism sector which we try to connect to you all. From the Ghana Tourism Authority, we do provide key information, assist with coordinating travel-related events, work on joint advertisement, fam trips, uh, help to negotiate hotel rates, and help build your relationship with the private sector. More details you can find upon just asking myself, Anari, or Jenna, or anyone from her team. And I will now pass it over to Jenna for any questions you guys might have. Thanks so much for that great presentation, Nicola. Um, as she just mentioned, now would be the time to type through any questions that you do have for us. We've gotten a couple in so far, so I'll start off with those, but please feel free to type through any questions that you might have, and we'll try to get Nicola to answer as many of those as possible. Um, so the first question for you, Nicola, uh, how deep is the Demerara River? So that river is actually the shortest one in Guyana and it measures at 346 kilometers or about 215 miles. 
And I, I know that you did touch on um, the COVID requirements very briefly at the beginning, but I do have a question about the entry requirements for travelers coming from the United States. Um, yeah, those coming from the United States and Canada, I suppose. Okay, so right now it is still required that all travelers in Tagana from the, U from the US and Canada included will have to get a PCR test at least seven days before traveling to Guyana. If you do get your PCR test um, three days before traveling to Guyana, you do not have to take a second test on arrival, but if you take that test four to seven days before coming in, you do have to get a second test on arrival. Your test does have to be negative before you can travel to the country, and you do have to fill out a passenger locator form on the guyanatravel.gy site. Um, currently, we are not accepting person. We are not accepting vaccination as an entry requirement. You still would be required to take the test. We do hope that this change changes going forward when more persons become vaccinated and the situation progresses. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there currently any river camping trips running? Uh, can you repeat that one? Are there any river camping tours that people can take? There are some. Um, most of the lodges um, and well, most of the tour operators that work with a lot of the highlighted lodges can arrange for this. Um, we can definitely, when you visit the Discover Guyana's Facebook page, we do have a list of all of the operators that are listed as safer travel as well. Some of them include Wilderness Explorers, Evergreen Adventures, Dagron Tours, that once you just let them know what are your requirements are, they'll be able to guide you to the best location and can arrange your trip as well. Perfect. I'm getting a lot of questions in relation to uh, the videos, uh, the one that you showed, in addition to any others highlighting other regions of Guyana, as well as images. So I will make sure in the webinar follow up to send you um, copies of images that you can use, as well as uh, where to access all of those different Guyana videos. So just wanted to say that because there's quite a few coming through. Um, another question. Um, in relation to the resorts on the small islands that you touched on, how would um, clients get to those destinations? Uh, so when you travel into Guyana, you're actually coming not that far off from our capital city. Your The main airport is just about 45 minutes to 60 minutes from the capital city, usually overnight in one of our boutique hotels in the capital city. And then you take a 45 minute ride uh, by road to the beginning of that main river that I touched on, the Essequibo River. And then you go in one of the smaller boats that we have here, um, just like a water taxi, and that carries you to those smaller islands. So that could take about an hour to about an hour and a half, depending on which one you're going to. The ones in the North Rupununi region, more down the river, you would have to, the best and quickest way to get them is to fly in one of our small Cessna planes. And that's from one of the domestic and international airports here. And you will either fly directly to one of the lodges if they do have an airstrip nearby, or to the township that is in that region, which is Lethem. And then from there, you can either take a drive or a water tax or one of the boats to the resort. That's perfect. You just answered another one of the questions within that, which was if if a client didn't want to take a boat, would there be other options available? So that's wonderful. Um, another one here for you, Nicola. We'll try to get to a couple more before we wrap it up. Um, but is it possible to book a private guide for these excursions? It is, um, especially when you work with one of our companies here, especially the local DMC Wilderness Explorers. Most of these trips are guided um, by someone on their team. However, if you do have a request to have a specific guide, just let them know when you start working on your trip and they will ensure that that is there. All trips to Ghana are customizable, so we do try to ensure that all travelers or all the needs of all travelers are met to their specifications as well. 
Perfect. So then just one last question before we tie things up for the day. Um, you talked about a lot of different activities that are available from those resorts along um, the river, water bodies. Um, are, would those be included activities? So that would be things such as the caiman tagging, uh, fishing, etc. Yes, so the ones that I highlighted are the ones that are um, done at these specific resorts. Not all of them will do everyone, not all of them are do fishing and not all do time and tagging, but those are the highlighted ones for these areas. When you do book a stay, you can choose to have it included in your package or you can choose not to. Um, it's all up to what you would like to do. Just ask them and they will be able to provide it for you. All right, that is wonderful. We're still getting a couple more questions in, but please, um, I will answer those for you in the webinar follow-up. So if we didn't get to it, I will send you all of the requested information um, in the webinar follow-up later this week. And also to mention, um, our next webinar is coming up on Thursday, March 4th at 2 p.m. This is gonna be a special webinar. Uh, we have a guest coming to join us from um, JetBlue. So she's going to be talking to us um, about their new aircraft and of course their new flight that they have uh, currently operating down to Guyana. So on that note, we are going to try to get um, different representatives from the GTA to start joining us for future webinars, as well as more people um, from within the Guyana tourism sector to come talk to you um, about their lodges or their experiences as well. So please, uh, I look forward to that in the future, but thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you guys and have a great day.